Hi guys, I hope that this is going to be quick, though I want to play, I don't know, about six or seven minutes of a video. But first, coronavirus, New York Mayor, ugh, I can't even, I don't even want to say these names, de Blasio, says self-quarantine of travelers is working. Good. 700 people are self-quarantining in New York. And a vast majority of the travelers were deemed at a medium risk, not low. Wow, medium risk. And they're self-quarantining. The number of travelers being watched underscored the scope of the public health response underway in New York and across the country as the virus spread across the globe. Ah, yes, that's self-quarantining. 700 Americans. You trust them? Do you remember this? Months ago, NBC's chief medical editor, Dr. Nancy Snyderman, traveled to Liberia to cover the Ebola crisis there. While she was there, a photojournalist who was working with her team was diagnosed with the virus. And before coming back to the U.S., Nancy agreed to a voluntary self-quarantine which she later violated, and Nancy is with us now. Nancy, good morning. It's Hi, good Matt. to see you. Great to be back. Reaction to this was fast and furious. Yep. Critics said your behavior was unacceptable. You've had time to digest it and think about it, reflect on it. What's your response? Yeah, you know, I am I'm very sorry for not only scaring my community and <laughs> the country, but adding to the confusion of terms that I think came as fast and furious as the news about Ebola did. Suddenly we're talking about quarantine, isolation, controlled monitoring, who should be in hospital rooms, who shouldn't be. And so when I came back from Liberia with my team, we had already been taking our temperatures four, five, six times a day, and we knew our risks in our heads, but didn't really appreciate, and frankly, we were not sensitive to how absolutely frightened Americans were. So I came back, agreed to a voluntary um, quarantine in my home, and then 72 hours later, left my home. And, and I think there's a great debate that's been going on about the medical protocol. The Casey Hickox right. situation is a good example of that. But I think in your situation, it wasn't about what was medically right to do. It was about breaking a promise. It was about breaking a promise. It was also about my association with Ashoka Mupo, who we had hired to be on our team, who now fortunately as well. And was blah, 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 blah. If Dr. Nancy Snyderman can't, can't actually do that, self-quarantine oh she's got to go out and get takeout food then how about that self-quarantining of 700 or just ordinary americans who aren't doctors so oh, but i guess she didn't understand she didn't understand those terms that they were using during that ebola crisis that we had <laughs> Yeah, self-quarantining. Well, why don't you, well, let's listen to this guy. And I'm going to play about seven minutes. I find him a very good uh, storyteller, actually. So, yeah, he, he, he arrived in the United States from Beijing. And he posted this video on the 9th, and he tells his story. Let's listen to it into the U.S. from Beijing on February 2nd at 6 p.m., one hour after the travel ban went into effect. And for those of you that aren't familiar with the travel ban, basically it forbids all foreign nationals from coming into the U.S. if they've been in China in the last 14 days, unless they're a permanent resident or an immediate family member of a U.S. citizen. My wife is a Chinese citizen. Now, when we arrived at the airport in Beijing, United staff kind of didn't really know what was going on. It was just passed, and it seemed like a lot of people hadn't figured it out. They were on the phone with TSA, and the first thing that they told me was, spouses apparently might not be allowed to go into the country. Your wife can't come. See, and the thing is, I'd gotten in touch with the U.S. Embassy a couple days prior. They told me to get in touch with the coronavirus emergency email line. They would get back to me and get it all sorted out. 
and they never got back to me. They have this whole hotline specifically to help people that are kind of being affected by the coronavirus. And I understand that there were people in Wuhan, there are people still in Wuhan that are in more dire situations. I could have gotten into the country, not had any of our documents accepted because they were all in Chinese, and then she would have had to go back. So I don't know what happened. I'm already back in the States and I still never got a reply. I was a little frustrated. Now I told the girl at the check-in counter that the people at the U.S. Embassy had told me it should be fine, but she had to call the shift manager. He told me, Basically, it's a massive show. Don't know what's going on. But he looked at our marriage certificate, which we had fortunately brought with us, and he said, I think you should be okay. He let us through. So, don't even... that they took about six people off the flight because they didn't have the necessary documents or whatever. Not sure if we're actually landing in DC, but wherever we land, I guess basically they're gonna do us a medical check and then off to a hotel for two weeks. We get on the plane and the pilot welcomes us. Everybody's really nice. It did make me very happy to see that pretty much everybody was wearing masks, except for a few Americans, which surprised me, but okay. So the pilot tells us that he's not actually sure where we're landing because another part of the travel ban was a restriction saying that anybody coming from China needed to land in one of seven authorized airports that could do advanced health screenings and do like preliminary checks before letting us into the country. We might be quarantined, we might be required to self-quarantine, but we had no idea. I asked everybody, nobody knew. Anyway, once we got on the plane, it was pretty uneventful. I didn't sleep very much because I was just looking at the news. I was trying to see what was going on, if we would get rerouted. Now, shortly before landing, ooh, two things happened. One, the pilot told us that we'd been cleared to land at Dulles, the airport in Washington, D.C. They didn't have any health forms on the plane. We'd have to fill them out when we landed, but everything seemed like it would be all right. Two, there was a kid sitting behind me the entire flight who wasn't feeling very well. And the flight attendant said that they would have to inform the medics. They came on board, told everybody to wait, and they escorted him and his mom off the flight. I saw him after, he was cleared, he was good to go, so I'm very happy to hear that. Then, we got off the plane. Now, this is where things started getting a little bit annoying. We got off the plane and everybody was either wearing one of these, or one of these, or one of these. But a lot of the airport staff actually weren't wearing anything. And that's fine, there's a lot of you know, differing opinions about masks and their usefulness, but I'll talk about that in a sec. So, quick little tour of my hotel. If you drive down this road right over here, all the way to the end, and then take a left, you'll get to my parents' house in five minutes. Super close, but I can't see my dad, which is very frustrating. But anyway, let, let's keep talking. We get to the front of the line at customs, and then all of a sudden, one of the guys in charge yells for everybody to stop. They closed the windows and all of the Customs and Border Patrol guys had a little meeting on the other side trying to figure out what to do. Same thing as in China, didn't really know how to deal with the situation. And I don't hold anybody responsible, any individual, like everybody was super nice, super helpful. They were just doing their jobs, but come on. But moving on, they finished up their meeting, reopened the windows, and I hear somebody's walkie-talkie saying that United hadn't sent a Chinese speaker over to help out, so they needed somebody to translate. I volunteered, helped out this older Chinese gentleman who was coming to visit his wife, daughter, and granddaughter, got him through, very nice guy, and then the Customs and Border Patrol officer just told me, hey, he could help me out next. Perfect. And... Now, I do feel like I need to stress this again. Everything that I've been seeing in the media, news reports, everything was saying that flights coming in from China would be subject to advanced health screenings. People would be required to either quarantine or self-quarantine with further government monitoring for probably around 14 days. We go through, he looks at our passports, he asks us, have you been to Wuhan? No. Have you been to Hubei province? No. Are you sick? No, I'm not sick. Have you been around anybody that was no. sick? No. Okay. All right. Well, then uh, welcome back. Wait. And uh, take care of yourself. Basically, I landed in the U.S. one hour after the new super strict travel restrictions and health screening started. No temperature reading, no health form, no information card, nothing. Wow. So, 
You know, my videos are not about whether or not coronavirus actually exists or whether or not it's coronavirus or 5G or both or a bio uh, engineered virus or nanotechnology because, yeah, I don't think we're ever going to really know. But isn't it interesting that we have, oh my God, 24 hour hysteria, mainstream media news, and oh, well, it seems that oh, people are hmm, kind of. Some are freaking out, which I'll show you, but advanced health screenings, seven authorized airports that will accept those travelers from China. Nothing to fill out. No temperature taken. Uh, just a few questions and okay. Well, go on your own. Self-quarantine, of course. Oh, you're not even required, but he's going to do it. I actually trust this guy that he's going to do it for two weeks, but well, I don't know about those 700 New Yorkers. Hmm. Okay, well, so what else do we have? We've got, ooh, coronavirus screening, missing more than half of cases. What? Global screening efforts to prevent the rapid spread of coronavirus? Big fail. Likely to fail? No, they've already failed. <laughs> Man. Well, I guess it's nice to know that we're not the only people in the world who are grossly incompetent. The U.S. has its first community spread coronavirus case, Northern California, Solano County. Oh, but they don't know how this person got it. Oof, that's not good. The patient was admitted to UC Davis Medical Center on February 19, was not diagnosed until the 23rd, raising concerns about testing capabilities and healthcare workers' exposure to the disease. So, I guess whoever this person was, was in the hospital for four days, and how many contacts? Nurses, doctors, were they wearing masks? So yeah, this guy, he did his, oh, everything's fine in the U.S. of A., and I ain't going to play any of it, but you can watch it. The link will be below. It's 55 minutes, and I cannot stomach listening. I can't read all of the details about this. You know, I'm just going through the headlines because it's important to watch. Watch. This thing is spreading all over the world, but apparently uh, not in the United States, not according to Trump. Well, here, let's do some mainstream media fact-checking. Coronavirus updates uh, countries prepare as outbreak spreads. Oops. Ooh, let's do this one first. Fact checking Trump's whoop, comments on coronavirus. Now, do I believe NBC in their fact checking? No. Do I believe Trump when he states his facts? No. How do you believe anybody? Okay, so the risk to Americans is low. And NBC actually said, the president, that was an accurate statement. Wow, my God. Well, that's about all NBC could do. Uh, vaccine is coming in a fairly quick manner. We're rapidly developing a vaccine. The vaccine is coming along well. And in speaking to the doctors, we think this is something that we can develop fairly rapidly. Oh, but, you know, look, National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, the director, Anthony uh, Fauci, explained in the same news conference, in the same one, 
he was there with the with Trump. See, yeah, I wasn't even watching that thing. All right, so uh, apparently he had a little bit of a conflicting statement to make, which was that vaccine mm, could take at least a year to 18 months. All right. Trump says there are just 15 corona cases, coronavirus cases in the U.S., 15 I heard him say 14. I did watch the like the first two minutes and then I got sick. So 14, 14. That's what I kept hearing, 14. Um, maybe then he said 15 later on because, yeah, we had a new case today. Community spread. Mm. That means person-to-person transmission. Okay. Well, don't worry. Trump's got it all under control. So I saw that our Secretary of Health and Human Services, Azar, said that we had 57 cases yesterday. And I came across an article today. It was 59 cases. So why is Trump saying 14 or 15? I don't get it. Actually, it's 60. Oh, 60 cases. Okay. Uh, but the CDC cate- uh, categorizes them in two groups. 15 were diagnosed in the U.S. And 45 were repatriated to the U.S. So I guess they're not really in the U.S. Um don't you sometimes just feel like you so just want to pass out? I guess they're not. Well, they are in the U.S., but they were repatriated. So, all righty. The flu kills more people. Yeah. So why are people kind of freaking out about this? Now, we know for a fact annually Our medical profession kills more people, uh, kills an awful lot of people. In fact, uh, death by medical care, death by hospitals and doctors, wasn't it like in the 100,000s annually? That might be a little high pharmaceuticals, the drugs that the FDA approves as safe, kills tens of thousands every year. All right, let's put this in perspective here. All right, Uh, well, the facts that we're getting from mainstream media, I'm not scared at all. Uh, Any of you? I'm, uh, you know... um, I'm concerned about the agenda behind all of this. Yeah, so, oh, that misinformation, that disinformation, you know, coming from those conspiracy theorists. And they suddenly really tighten up on the censorship. Or, Suddenly they start banning a lot of channels. I lose contact with you guys. I don't like that. That really concerns me. A lockdown (laughs) in this area, for me, that concerns me. I sure don't want to be locked down in this community. Um, Yeah, well, but I'm not concerned about contracting the so-called virus. All right, so, yeah, the flu kills more. Um, Let's see, what else do I have? Oh, frustration is really mounting. It's, um, can't seem to get any day without major computer problems. 
and a slowdown that occurs every single night now for about, I don't know, three hours from about, I don't know, 7.38 until after like 11 p.m. The slowdown is so frustrating because it's really slow. <laughs> well, let's go on. U.S. confirms new coronavirus case. Germany says it's at the beginning of an epidemic. Ooh, well, here are some updates for you. Uh, Trump says schools should prepare pandemic plans just in case. Hmm. All right. Every aspect of our society should be prepared. I don't think it's going to come to that, but be prepared. Uh, Iraq bans public gatherings. Uh, I'm not going to read all of them, but yeah, I'll link below to everything and you can check it out. Germany says it can't trace cases and it's heading for an epidemic. Germany, too. Community spread. U.S. Community spread. That means person-to-person -person transmission. So, are they just going to let this spiral so out of control that they need to lock down communities in the U.S. and in Germany? And uh, They may very well. 10-year Treasury yield drops to new record low of 1.3%, and things are not going very well with our free-fall economy. Peter Marks, director of the FDA's Center for Biologics Evaluation and Research, which determines the safety of effectiveness of vaccines, said that the three-month estimate for a coronavirus vaccine to enter human trials may be too aggressive. So Trump saying there's going to be a vaccine soon. Don't worry, soon, soon. It's coming. It doesn't look like it's coming soon, which is a good thing because I sure as hell don't want it. But they may just, ooh, magically, because he magically uh, brought the economy back ooh, to like 1969 where everybody was working again. He did it magically. He did it, but oh God, within what, four, six months of he residing in the White House? So he could magically bring a vaccine out and then mandate all of us to take it. Uh, Workday cancels internal sales conference. Yep, they're going to do it virtual, a virtual experience. But these were th 3,000 people. That's canceled. Orlando, Florida, too bad, guys. Wherever you're coming from, you ain't going to Florida. Got to stay in your home and do it virtual. The you know, internet. Norway, first case. Hmm. More countries. Georgia reports first case. More countries. Wow. U.S. confirms new case. Coronavirus causes Moody's to slash global vehicle sales forecast for 2020. Ooh. Economy is getting hit. Pakistan, first two cases more countries. Uh, CDC confirms 59 U.S. cases, 12, 15 p.m. Then he comes on the television and says we have 14 cases. Well, because the others are not really here, but here. It's kind of like QE, not QE. No. Well, they're here, so why do you have those two categories? I don't know. Uh, the 14 cases, I guess they all didn't visit China, that they all just contracted this virus some other way. Who the hell knows? It doesn't matter. No. Uh, Delta slashes South Korea service slashes 
No more flights to South Korea. The numbers are rising in South Korea. Uh, more video game companies pull out of PAX East in Boston. Won't be going to any gatherings, I guess, public gatherings. Travel restrictions irrelevant if coronavirus becomes a pandemic. Okay, well, who is the... Oh, oh Anthony um, Fauci, 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 director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. When you have multiple countries involved, it's very difficult to do. In fact, it's almost impossible. Why? This is a fatal, deadly disease, Anthony. And I don't want it to begin. So, um, well, when you have people coming in from China, and you just heard the fabulous, fabulous advanced testing, nothing. I guess he's right. I guess it really doesn't matter at all. Um, all right, do I have anything else? Brazil, yes, Latin America, coronavirus, first case, Brazil. Italy, cases triple in two days. It's, uh, it's over 400. 12 people have died. And you know what I think is really funny? The European Union. Well, let me bring you to that article right now. It's, it's wow. It's a wow. EU officials refuse to implement border controls to stop coronavirus. Hmm. So we have this deadly virus. But you got to keep those borders open. That's right. More important, the number of confirmed cases in Italy soared. Well, now it's up to uh, over 400. Got 12 deaths. No, not 10. Um, but keep those borders open. Abolish passport checks between the 26 European states. And it must not be compromised. The Prime Minister of Italy refused to implement border controls, claiming it wouldn't help stop the containment of the virus. Oh, well, why not? Uh, you got the, that lockdown going in Italy. So, is that... Why, why implement a lockdown in a city when you're not going to lock down the border. Well, since this virus, Switzerland, oh God, I can't remember all of the countries, but guess what? Uh, the people who have been diagnosed with coronavirus in other European countries have ties to being in Italy. Do I have to say more? Do I have to explain this? I hope not. Yes. Okay. Uh, the health minister reported in Rome Tuesday, we agreed to keep borders open. Closing borders would be a disproportionate and ineffective measure at this time. Yet, the numbers are rapidly increasing and the deaths you got 12, you got this deadly fatal, fatal disease. I don't understand. Switzerland, Austria, which border? Italy. Uh, they've confirmed their first cases. French transport minister. He's also refused to close the border between France and Italy. Germany also has refused to close the border. European commissioner said borders 
should remain open while suggesting that the threat of disinformation was more of a concern. Oh, wow. The threat of disinformation was more of a concern. More of a concern than containing this virus. Well, it sure does take a lot of work to understand. Understand people, these, these, you know, people in positions of authority. But I've given up trying to understand. Uh, it does seem if they're going to keep the borders open and let people just freely move about, then one could really speculate that they want this to spread or they want a reason, you know, to say that it's spreading. But is it spreading? My subscribers in any of these countries, especially Italy, could you let us know what's going on? Are people dying? Do you know people who have gotten sick? Numerous nearby countries have closed their border with China, yet infected Chinese citizens are still flowing into the West. World Health Organization, whose job it is to stop a global pandemic, has repeatedly insisted that preventing stigmatization and keeping borders open is critical. Wow. This takes PC to a whole new level, doesn't it? By the way, Britain, what's going on? What's going on, my Brits? Please weigh in here. Tell us. Uh, because, well, what I'm reading, it's like Americans who are canceling their conferences already, don't want to be in crowds, doing that virtual thing. Oh, right, the CDC, yeah, told Americans to prepare. All right, well, I guess they're listening to their authority figures, but more than 30 UK schools have shut or sent people home, despite, oof, they're not listening to the authority figures, oof. That could mean re-education for those who closed down the school. Well, the health secretary, urged them to stay open, but nope, they closed down. 160 Britons face a fortnight trapped in quarantine in a hotel with travel plans for millions up in the air. U.S. oil company Chevron has sent home 300 British staff from its headquarters in London because a worker fell ill. Wow, man. So, yeah, coronavirus chaos and confusion is gripping almost every part of British life today as schools defied the government. Oof, defied the government. Well, I think a school can defy the government and not much is going to happen but the individual. All right, big businesses shut down, major sporting events postponed. Are people freaking out in, in the UK or any other country? Please weigh in. Uh, I think that's it for this, but I can't move my cursor. Oh, there it goes. Um, let me just see if I have some spread to 40 uh, countries around the world, affecting markets, disrupting travel. Here's what you need to know. Um, Anything else? Okay, so Trump's not worried about the coronavirus, but his scientists are. Oh, okay. Well, that's what we live now. You can't get people together on anything. I didn't even have... Uh, all of my highlighting has come off. Weird things are happening. So, unknown source... California, Northern California. Iran's reported mortality rate for coronavirus higher than in other countries. People are claiming it's because Iran has 5G. 
I got a comment from a subscriber who knows somebody who works at the Pentagon, and they told, sorry, her or him, that the military is getting involved. Major U.S. stock indexes drop for third straight day. Have you gotten your money out of the banks yet? The people have vanished. Some bars and clubs reopen in Milan. Okay, local authorities said they can reopen, yet the numbers are rising. Well, you know, the economy's got to go, man. You, you can't just stop it dead in its tracks. It's The show must go on. Hospitals across the U.S. prepare for coronavirus. All right, this is what I got on hospitals. We simply don't have enough of them or ICU units anywhere. Oh, my God. We don't even have enough hospitals. And the uh, those masks, well, apparently, we've got the profiteers. Money, 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 money. Respiratory respirators is whoa exorbitant prices yeah you want to know what the price here um i'd like to think that this is a well, a typo but this 3m85119 uh n95 respirator 11000 1111111111 here 9999999 and you know, the, the, just the 3M regular masks, $40 to 1000 Ah, life is for the rich. And Americans, hmm, I recommend that you pay close attention to how your fellow Americans respond to this crisis because... It'll give you a good indication of how they will respond to that SHTF event. You know, let's say the economy goes down or whatever happens. We ain't a Petri dish. Life will end as we know it. We have not, have we not learned lessons from Wuhan residents Stay out. Anybody who has the coronavirus, stay out Orange County. But this isn't the only place that I've seen this. I think it was another place in, no, it was Seattle. That's right. Residents with their, with their posters, with their placards, stay out. We've got a lot of scared puppies in our country. Yes, they're called Americans and they're two-legged. They're scared, scared.